In the year 1930, before the first World Cup took place, Jules Rimet, the president of FIFA at that time, ordered a new trophy to be made for this event. So he hired a sculptor by the name of Abel Lafleur, and his order was to create the greatest trophy ever made because this will be the World Cup. This sculptor designs a trophy that's based on Nike. Nike is about victory in Greek mythology. The trophy's height was about 35 centimeters and it weighed 3.8 kilograms. It was made with silver, but it was lined with 14 karat gold. When the trophies finished, they named it Victory. But we have to say, after World War II, in the year 1946, they changed the name of the trophy to the Jules Rimet Trophy, because he was the first president to start the World Cup. When the trophy was created, one of the rules was that when you win the World Cup, you could keep it for four years. And you could keep the trophy if you win the World Cup three times in a row. And this has not happened to this day. You might say Brazil won it five times, but they didn't win three times in a row. Either way, this is how the World Cup trophy began. But let's move forward and get to the year 1938. This is the year where Italy wins the World Cup and based on FIFA's rule, they could keep the trophy for four years. But after one year this takes place, World War II begins and everybody forgets about the World Cup. Now the trophy is in Mussolini's hand and he's saying that it belongs to Italy now. But Hitler on the other side wants the trophy as well and he even hired people to go and take it from him. Even though Hitler and Mussolini were cool with each other, the Germans would send spies to find this trophy and if they could find it, they should bring it to Germany. But they were never successful because it seems like Mussolini really hit this thing good. Hitler and Mussolini never got what they wanted. After World War II, when Mussolini was executed, the trophy returned to FIFA. Time passes and we get to 1966, and the World Cup is taking place in England. Before the World Cup begins, FIFA takes the trophy to London and keeps it safe until the World Cup final arrives. They never mentioned where they took the trophy because of the risk it would have. But now we know the trophy was hidden in Methodist Central Hall in Westminster. At that time, the Jules Rimet trophy was insured for 30,000 pounds. And if you want to calculate that in today's dollars, that's about $785,000. It didn't matter how much gold or silver was used in this thing, but it was insured for 30,000 pounds. On the 20th of March 1966, before the World Cup begins, the World Cup is chilling in Central Hall in Westminster and the security guards are on the lookout so nobody takes it. Everything was good until 11 a.m. But when the security guard take their lunch break, they return to something terrible. And what they were confronted with is that the World Cup had been stolen. The security guards couldn't believe how easily and how quickly the thieves actually stole the trophy. To enter the basement of Westminster where the trophy was at, they had to break three locks. Even though the public didn't know where the World Cup was being kept safe, these thieves knew exactly where to go. And they even know the security guards will take a break at 11 a.m. The English government quickly put out a message and said, if anyone helps us find the trophy, we'll reward them 3,500 pounds. And if you calculate it in today's dollars, that's about $90,000. But the thieves weren't happy with such little cash. So they decided to take a little piece off the trophy and send it to Joe Mayers, 
the president of Chelsea FC at that time. They asked Joe Mears to give them 15,000 pounds cash for the trophy to be returned. If you want to calculate it in today's dollars, that's about $400,000. They even threatened Joe Mears and told him, if you tell the police or anyone you know, we will melt this trophy and nobody will see it ever again. Even though they threatened Joe Mears, he still contacted the London police. The police tell Joe to have a meet up with the thieves. They fill up a briefcase full of cash and tell Joe Mears to meet up at a place. Where did they meet up? in Battersea Park, London. Joe Mears began to head that way and the police followed him along. When Mears gets to the destination, one of the thieves by the name of Jackson gets in the car with him and tells him to keep on driving for about 10 minutes. Jackson slowly realized that he's being followed and it seems like the police are involved. And that is why when there was a red light, Jackson, or his real name, Edward Bletchley, gets out of the car and starts running. The police stop at the red light and also chase after him. Jackson can't get very far and they arrest him. Just like we said, Jackson's name was not Jackson. And when they looked over his paperwork, it was Edward Bletchley and he's an experienced con man. Obviously, they first ask him, where is the World Cup? Edward says, I don't know where it is and I don't know who has it. They just hired me to do the job. After interrogation, he says, I know where the World Cup is, but if you let me go, I'll tell you who it is. The police tells him, we can't let you go, but if you tell us where it is, we could help you out. After a few days, he finally confesses who has the World Cup and the name Bernard Mikowski was used, who is also another experienced con man that's 40 years old. When the police are trying to find Mikowski, there was another man walking his dog by the name of David Corbett. He realized that his dog Pickles keeps on sniffing a piece of bush, and when he looks inside the bush, he sees something wrapped in newspaper. He unwraps the newspaper, and he realizes that he just won the World Cup. He gives a treat to his dog and tells him good job and heads towards the police station. When Corbett enters the police station and tells him I found the World Cup, everybody laughs at him and tells him that's probably a fake. But either way, the police station actually called the detectives to come and check it out themselves. The detectives come to the police station and realize, yup, that's the real World Cup. When Corbett gives the trophy back to the police station, he realizes that there is a lot of reporters by his house and they start clapping for him. They told him that your dog is the World Cup winner. David Corbett was awarded 6,000 pounds for what he did, but Pickles didn't get any money for it. They just gave him a few treats. If you follow the World Cup, you'll know that in 1966, England wins the World Cup for the first and last time. The players that won the World Cup on England's squad each received 1360 pounds. But this is in a way where Corbett got 6,000 pounds for what he did. And that's about $160,000 in today's money. So the reporters weren't lying that Corbett actually won the World Cup. It's also good to know that Pickles got a medal for what he did. It's not the actual World Cup medal, but it's something nice. The coolest part is that this dog got extremely famous in England at that time. Even though England just won the World Cup and the players were beginning to get very famous, but the most famous living thing in England at that time was Pickles. But what happened to the thieves? Jackson or Edward Bletchley only got two years in prison, but no one else was ever arrested. 
From then forward, nobody actually received the real trophy. When a team wins the World Cup, they bring the real trophy to the stage and the captain of the team raises it. But after the ceremony is over, the trophy is returned to FIFA and the trophy that's given to the actual player and team is a replica version of the actual one. Since we're here talking about the World Cup, it's good to know that in 1974, when the World Cup was taking place in West Germany, they changed the trophy, the trophy we all know and love today. In recent World Cup in Qatar, Messi raised the actual World Cup. But after the ceremony was over, he was given the replica to take home with him. The team that wins it could actually keep the replica forever. They don't have to return it after four years like before. But in the year 2026, when the final is taking place, Messi, the captain of the team that just won it, gets the trophy from FIFA and give it to the next winner. So where is the actual trophy kept? In Switzerland, in FIFA's hands. So how much is the new World Cup trophy worth? Right now, this is the most expensive trophy in the entire world, and it's worth $20 million. The World Cup was stolen in England, and they won it, but they could never repeat this championship again. The other time where they were close to the final, Maradona scores a goal with his hands, and the referees don't realize. England was eliminated, and Argentina went to the finals, and they actually won the whole thing. They asked Maradona, did you score with your hand? He said, no, I scored with the hand of God. 